Oh my god. Looks like my workshop has flooded. That's a good start. Well, in the last video, I kind of skipped ahead and made a tenon without really showing how I made one of these templates. Because I thought that Matthias did a really good job at explaining how one of these templates are made. But in case this is of interest to anyone out there, here's my take on how I made them. Obviously, I would like to make the first three test templates as accurate as possible so that any inaccuracy would be the pentagram's fault. Therefore, I decided to use the laser cutter at school, which was much faster than a CNC. But one major drawback was that the maximum thickness for plywood is 5mm, and the plywood has to be quite soft and with very little layers, which means no to any good plywood. The laser cutter took less than 3 minutes to cut the templates out and there were no tabs to clean up. I can then cut out some scrap MDF as a mounting plate for the template. Roughly centering the template so that the one piece I'm cutting is also going to be roughly centered. And then marking the hole locations. On the table saw, I am connecting the hole with the edge, making a slot, which makes it possible to remove the template without removing the bolts. Then I can glue the template on the mounting plate, making sure that the edges are flush with the tri square and roughly centered. To clamp it down, I am using a dumbbell to prevent any movement, and then determining the position of the guide rail. Since this template produces a thick tenon, and this wooden bar is set up so a totally router bit just touches the surface of the tabletop. I know that the center of the tenon that I'm cutting is 6mm from the face of the tabletop. Therefore, if I want to center this, I would raise the guide rail by 12mm up because any measurement from the tabletop transferred to the template holder needs to be times by 2. And this is due to the fact that the pantograph has a 2 to 1 reduction. Once the glue has dried on these templates, it is quite tempting to actually try these out but uh, I want to address a few issues here and there before I do that. So yes, the springs, yes, they're kind of a really big problem right now because they aren't actually strong enough to lift the router up vertically and they work against each other when I roll the router horizontally across. And when I take the back spring off, It actually makes the entire process of rolling it across a lot easier and feels almost weightless but it also makes the vertical motion really difficult so now I'm gonna try and put a spring maybe from here to there and that should help it lift it up So now I'm going to try and stretch the spring inside here with two eye bolts on either side. And also something I noticed when I was making the test cut. Yep, a lot of twist. A lot of it. And while I'm at it, I wanted to check something before putting this thing back together. Hate to disappoint, but this 6mm shaft is by no means stiff enough to be the main shaft of this pantograph mechanism. With just two fingers on my left hand, and I'm right handed, I'm able to get this to have half a millimetre of play. Just imagine how much play there would be if I rest a 7 kilogram router on top of it. So instead, I'm going to use this 10 millimeter shaft that I've just got laying around for a couple of years now. And this <coughs> needs both hands to have half a millimeter of play. These DeWalt bit tend to drill a little bit off center when enlarging another hole. So I'm going to use a countersink bit to first create a chamfer and that should help guide the drill bit directly center in the hole. So 
since I've already got half the pentagraph taken apart, I might as well change out these five mil steel rods because they are looking flimsier by the minute. Well, this spring is just way too strong. Let's just look at this. And I cannot force it down, no matter what. Apart from having the spring being way too strong, the pathway of the spring actually gets cut off once I put it all the way down, as you can see here. So instead, I'm going to mount a weaker spring from here to here. I'm so glad that I put the springs at the back this way because now it feels almost weightless to lift up and I can put it in an up position like that and it won't fall down by itself. And as to whether I solved the twisting problem, well, I tried my best, but it's still twisting like heck. You might be thinking I'm deliberately delaying testing out the new templates. Well, of course, I don't want dust all over my face, but I really need to do something about this switch and probably change it to something a little bit more elegant like this one. I actually want to make the plunge lever and the death stop first because right now I don't really know where to put this without interfering with the plunge stops. Speaking of delaying the test cut. I've got all my parts cut out and with the holes drilled out as well. I've started sanding some of them and probably went way overkill for the handle which I shaped to fit my hand perfectly and now I just need to find out where to put this on the template holder. This seems like a good spot. And now I can mount the plunge stop. Ah, oh, that's never gonna work. I've finally got this to fit correctly. And I've also made two more knobs to help tighten it down. And so it works like this. And with all the anticipation, let's finally get on mounting the switch. I am by no means an electrician, so I just kind of guessed where all the terminals are, and hopefully it works. So I changed the wiring on the switch, and now let's try it again. That worked. Well, I know that some of you have lost their voice from screaming at the screen and some of you are screaming at the screen right now and maybe a few of you have just started to realise that this switch doesn't actually lock in the on position. 
Yep, hate to disappoint again, but that's true. So when I press the red button down, this actually disengages these two wires, otherwise they're constantly engaged. And for the green wire, these two are constantly disengaged, so when I press the green button, this engages them. And this is basically how I figured out how to wire this thing, which is basically to wire the motor to these two pins and the inlet to these two pins. And therefore when I press the green button, it connects these two wires together. And because these two wires are constantly connected, I'll have electricity passing through. But as soon as I let go of the green button, it pushes back, disconnecting these two wires and I won't have any more power. So although this switch has two buttons, but only one button actually does anything. So for the time being, I'm just going to use one of these switches. And I know, I might get butchered in the comments by safety people about it. And I want to put the switch somewhere around about here. Just one more thing before I set up for a test cut, I want to mention about this template follower holder thingy. I've moved it from the front to the back because I've offset the template holder further away and that means I have a little bit more room at the back and it provides a little bit more support for the template followers. I've butted the template holder all the way against the template and I hope that this will actually eliminate some of the twist. I've got everything clamped down and I should be ready to go now. And as expected, what the- Yeah, I kind of ran into this problem last time as well and I kind of had to put some tape around the bearing when I made the tenon. So I've increased the diameter to 25.3 or 25.4 and let's try that again. So the router kind of tore a little bit off at the start because I didn't really clamp it down well enough. And let's check the fit. Yep, that actually looks pretty damn good. Even though that tenon fits, I actually had to shim this bearing back quite a bit from 24 to 25.3. And that means that this pentagraph is actually like a 2 point something ratio, I guess. So I'll have to check for accuracy in the next video.